Director Johnson, Acting Director Carl Dorelli, can we get y'all up to the front, please, as well? Thank you. All right. So good morning, everyone. My name is Anthony McAuliffe, Deputy Director of Communications for Prince George's County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, we are going to be discussing a new beautification program today, as well as our county's overall beautification efforts to keep Prince George's County clean and green. Beautification is something that is truly a community effort and requires all of us to work together. So we're just so thankful that today we have members of the Woodlawn community out here and leadership from Woodridge Elementary School, because these are leaders in the community who show how to do beautification right in this community. So we're super excited today. You'll hear from County Executive Angela Alsobrooks. Then you'll hear from Michael Johnson, Director of the Department of Public Works and Transportation. Following him will be Adriana Calderelli, Acting Director of the County's Department of the Environment. Then we'll hear from Ms. Ina Fells, President of the Woodlawn Community Association. And finally, we have Principal Tamara Gilbert of Woodridge Elementary School. So with that, I will turn things over to our County Executive, Angela Alsobrooks. Good morning, everyone. It looked nice and warm till we got in the ship here, right? It's a little, it became a little bit chillier, so I'll make sure that we uh, we talk pretty quickly. But what a beautiful morning it is for uh, for all of us to be here. I'm so grateful for it, and want to um, begin by acknowledging a few people who are with us today, starting with our. Deputy Chief Administrative Officer Floyd Holt. I want to thank him so much for uh, for joining us today, as well as Public Works and Transportation Director Michael Johnson. I want to thank you, sir, for being here. Um, our Deputy Director Adriana Calderelli uh, of the Department of Environment. Um, is she here? Yes. Oh, there she is. Thank you so much, uh, Woodlawn Community Association President Ina Fells. Thank you so much. Um, and all of the Woodlawn community members, I want to thank all of them for uh, for joining us as well. Also want to thank our principal, Tamara Gilbert of Woodridge Elementary School uh, and her team uh, for being here this morning. I want to thank them as well for helping to show all of their students um, how important it is to keep our community clean. And we're here to kick off a really wonderful new media and beautification program. Oh, oh, also we have Senator Alonzo Washington, who, oh, here he is, still here, thank you, sorry, I didn't want to forget him. We're here to kick off a wonderful new media and beautification program um, through our Department of Public Works and Transportation. We're planting trees, shrubs, flowers, and grass, and 10 community medians that help beautify our neighborhoods. And we have another eight medians that will improve in the future. We're here today in the Woodlawn community because right behind me, down the block, is one of the first 10 medians that we finished as a part of this new program. You can kind of see it all in the distance where you see those beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, I want to thank the Woodlawn community for their partnership and thank them as well for allowing us to work with them on this beautification project. I know Director Johnson uh, can, can elaborate a bit more on the details of this program overall and where we have some additional sites that are already complete. But we're looking forward to completing the next eight sites and continuing to expand this program to communities across the county. This new program is a key part of our overall efforts to beautify Prince George's County cleaning up and improving the environment with key investments that help our community reflect the pride and care that we all share for it. And this is only one area where our administration has made tremendous progress for Prince Georgians. From the very beginning, in 2019, county government leaders, agency personnel, and community leaders came together to develop our proud priorities and promises portfolio. These priorities represent our commitment to building and maintaining a 21st century county government infrastructure that improves the quality of life for Prince Georgians. And even in the face of a global health emergency, we kept our eye on the goal. The Prince George's Forward Task Force and the Police Reform Commission made additional policy recommendations that expanded our portfolio and laid out the path to emerging from COVID-19 pandemic as a better and stronger Prince George's County. The hard work has continued since then, 
both out front and behind the scenes. And today I'm proud to say that of the 176 proud priorities and promises that we made to our residents, 164 of them are either completed or ongoing. One of those important priorities has been to reduce litter and improve the health of our environment. To accomplish this, we have invested tens of millions of dollars into programs across government that help beautify our county. This includes the Department of Public Works and Transportation programs like street sweeping, a new program that we rolled out last year during our litter blitz, and we included investments during this budget cycle to help us expand in 2024. There's the Right Tree, Right Place program, which has planted over 10,000 trees since 2011. It also includes the Department of Public Works and Transportation's Growing Green with Pride program. Last spring, over 4,000 volunteers collected 60,880 pounds of litter in one day. Now, this kind of community involvement is so important to our county. Everyone who lives here is affected by litter, and we can all do our part to prevent it and to clean it up. That's why we're standing here in Woodlawn today. This community shows us the power of a community who cleans up and beautifies their community. Through partnerships with the community, government, schools, faith leaders, and residents, the community, the Woodlawn Community Association has accomplished so much in the battle against litter and other community issues. This has required years of hard work, and we thank hard, which should thank the hardworking people like Community Association President Ina Fells for leading by example. By the way, if you want to help uh, break our growing green with pride record, um, next weekend is, I should tell you, uh, fall growing green with pride day. So don't forget to sign up and, uh, and help us to lead, uh, to lead by example yourself. Um, our county spends a great deal of money on collecting litter. In fact, our Department of Public Works and Transportation collected over 5,800 tons of, of litter on county roads in the first four years of our administration. Um, now, I have to tell you that that's a problem. You know, that really, that, that's a problem. Um, but the long-term goal is to show people living in and visiting our community that littering is unacceptable. You know, it's, it's my father who said, you know, litter doesn't grow like grass. And so this is a real problem. You know, we, we spend so much money, but we have to do better. Um, I'm proud to report that we've made important progress on this key initiative. This is one that the people said was very important to them. And so in 2022, we launched the PGC compost uh, through the Department of the Environment, a countywide curbside composting program. that is helping us be an environmental leader in the state. So far, 75,000 households have received a green wheel cart to collect food scraps and yard trimmings. Our Department of the Environment has been hard at work processing this material at our composting facility. And so far, we've processed over 61,000 tons of organics. This helps us transform our waste into useful, nutrient-rich soil, which we can use to help plants grow across our county. In addition to an all new composting program, we improved our bulky trash collection service, reducing wait time significantly and helping keep trash, large trash items from littering empty lots and roadways. Now this crowd does not seem all that excited um, about all these programs that we're rolling out. I have to tell you, do you know how many hours and, and also, you know, I have heard so much from Prince Georgians who meet me at the Wegmans and at the gas station and they've been saying, what are you going to do about this litter or else we're going to run you right out of town? And here we are, we're talking about the litter. We have the composting program, which people didn't think we could set up, but we have the bulky trash collection service. People told me they were waiting too long for bulky trash collection. Um, and so I, we, we, I was hoping there'd be a little bit more excitement and enthusiasm. Okay. So now in the composting uh, program and other efforts, I want you to know have paid off. Because we have achieved, now come on now, I want y'all to hear this piece. We have achieved the number one county ranking in Maryland for recycling and waste diversion. Come on, Prince George's County, come on. This is truly a transformative step forward for our county. It is so well-deserved. And, you know, we want to thank every single Prince George. Never bet against a Prince George. 
That's the long and short of it. Never, ever bet against a Prince George. And, um, and we have just really come so far. So number one in Maryland. Meanwhile, our Department of Permitting Inspections and Enforcement has cleaned over 224 blighted properties so far this year through our Clean Lots program. That deserves, come on, y'all, a round of applause as well. And we've helped make sure vendors and shopping centers follow the rules through our vendor enforcement program and our shopping center initiative. These programs help hold vendors and shopping centers accountable for county code violations like littering. Come on, that's that's incredible also, is that all of us have a role to play. So we've made so much progress beautifying Prince George's County. We're going to keep making progress so that the natural beauty of this wonderful place can shine through even brighter. And we can take beautification to the next level by helping to make sure that people are aware. Again, as my father said, litter does not grow like grass. And every single one of us has a responsibility to pick up after ourselves and to remind people close to us that they should be doing the same thing. The less money we spend collecting litter, the more that we can spend expanding programs that plant trees like the Right Tree, Right Place program or beautifying medians or educating our students about the environment and climate change. We don't want to continue to spend millions of your tax dollars cleaning up behind people. They should be cleaning up behind themselves. We want to be able to invest your tax dollars in areas that beautify and grow the value of our property and the value of our communities. And when we invest, invest in our environment, we create an even more pleasant place for us to call home. I so appreciate all of the hard work everyone has done uh, to make our beautification initiatives a success from our government agencies to the Prince Georgians who partner with us on this work every day. I appreciate your commitment to Team Prince Georges. Together, we can and will make this county strong and beautiful for generations to come. So now I want to I want to thank you again, and now I want to hand over uh, the rest of this program to Director Michael Johnson from our Department of Public Works and, and, and Transportation. Thank you so much, Director Johnson. Good morning. Thank you, County Executive. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Johnson. I'm the Director of the uh, Department of Public Works and Transportation. And uh, I want to thank you for joining us this morning at the County Executive's Beautification Proud Priority Press Conference. Uh, we're proud to share some exciting news regarding the County's beautification initiatives. Um, we heard the County Executive um, when she said that she wanted us not only to pick up litter, but to enhance the aesthetics of Prince George's County. Uh, so what we did, uh, DPWT did, was to partner with uh, private and government stakeholders in our beautification efforts, and we produced some marvelous results with a lot more to come. So our combined uh, accomplishments include uh, med median beautifications, and um, in the spring, th these are sort of seasonal, they're temperature dependent. So you have a very narrow window in the spring when you can do it before it gets too warm. And warm is like May, right? So we did a 10 in the spring. And around now in the fall where it's a little cooler, like today, um, this is perfect time for planting. So we plan to do the rest of the medians that, were, that we plan to do as part of our pilot. Uh, the, the process that we're following with this is that these medians serve as exemplars, you know, ex in like, uh, you know, good examples of what is possible with the medians. Prince George's County has about 800 medians, somewhere thereabouts. And a lot of those medians are underutilized from our perspective. They are sort of, they serve a purpose. Yes, they divide traffic, they have a traffic safety function, but those are sort of utilitarian functions. And we feel that um, they can serve also an aesthetic purpose whereby they can be beautified. They can sort of enhance gateways to communities. They can beautify this very beautiful county as the county executive mentioned. Um, so we also um, have a program, uh, one of our most successful programs is the Right Tree, Right Place program. Like years ago, before um, arborists got involved with um, trees, you would have oak trees planted in a very narrow strip. But what do you think happens? 
right? You kind of see it with the, right? So the oak tree is a massive tree. It's a very good shade tree, but it doesn't fit in a, in a very narrow strip. So when it's young, it's fine. But when it's 50 or 70 years old, it's a problem, right? It sort of damages sidewalks and so on. So we also planted Bradford pears and cherry trees, you know, and those don't like salt and they become hazardous. They sort of um, damage cars and so on. So the Right Tree, Right Place program took a sort of objective way of looking at the entire tree stock in the county and sort of identifying trees that should not be planted where they were planted and sort of correcting that. And that's been a really successful program. It has sort of um, beautified neighborhoods. It has reduced the um, accidents and, and number of hazardous trees. This year alone, we that program has removed 1,200 hazardous trees from the inventory. Now, Prince George's County has about 130,000 trees, somewhere in that range. And we want, we need more. We want more. And um, we, you know, that's a, a great accomplishment to re reduce that. In the in the PGC 311 system our two biggest complaint classes are sidewalks and trees so we are working right tree right place is working on that and we do have an initiative that we will be rolling out uh, fairly soon with dealing with sidewalks and we have lots of sidewalks that need help they're kind of like not as level as they could be right so one of the ways that you could there are two ways that you can deal with that you can either come in and sort of tear the sidewalk up and report and that's very expensive, right? Side, side, that would cost uh, millions and millions of dollars. Uh, but there's another uh, way to sort of deal with that. Um, those sidewalks that are sort of um, uneven are not structurally unsound, right? So there's no reason to destroy the sidewalk to report. I think that's a waste of money. So a way that, we c that we're going to address that is that we're going to start a program um, of shaving off the uneven portions so we end up with like a level path throughout. Now, there are some constraints on that, that we can't shave more than two inches. The sidewalk is four inches thick, and it has to be that thick so that if a car wheel goes onto it, it doesn't rupture. Um, but a lot of the trip hazards are less than that. So if, though, if we can make those communities level, we'll be able to reduce a very large number of the 311 complaints that are in the system and also provide a safe passage for uh, residents in their communities. So that's, a, that's one of our initiatives that, uh, that we're working on coming forward. Another big initiative which came out of, this, of the blitz that the county executive or, uh, directed us to work on last October is uh, what we discovered um, while doing the blitz is that the street sweepers, we had one street sweeper, and when we, when we ran that sweeper through the routes, that sweeper, that machine picked up 237 tons of litter, one machine. So we kind of said, uh, like a light bulb moment, we had a light bulb moment, I said, wow, you know, we are missing something here, right? What, what we really need to do is to really have a more robust sweeping program. And to that end, um, we are in the process of taking delivery of, of uh, two additional sweepers, and, and next fall we'll have an additional three. So we'll have uh, six sweepers total in our inventory. So we will start uh, phase one of residential sweeping in the county. Now, this is unprecedented. It's never been done before in Prince George's County. And this here um, should produce uh, excellent results. So what we planned, our plan is, is not for to have sweeping on demand. People sometimes call me to ask, can this street be swept? Uh, yeah, we could send a sweeper. But what we really want to do is to put it on a schedule. Right, so you don't really have to call, right? So we, once once we have enough machines, once we have, five, it will take five machines to put it on a schedule, and that will allow us to sweep um, 1,560 miles of the 2,000 sweepable miles of the, of the 2,000 miles. All of our streets can't be swept. The streets have to have a curb and gutter like like we have here before it can be swept. An open section, like like some of these roads, can't really be swept unless it has a big shoulder. So the total amount of miles that are sweepable are about 1,560, and we plan to sweep all of the county by next um, fall. That's our plan, and that's predicated on the machines coming in uh, that we're purchasing currently. So that's a tremendous, and I think that that deserves right a big hand because that that is really big news. So I mean, if you if one machine is picking up 237 tons, and the county executive mentioned that we picked up more than 5,000 tons in, in a four-year period. 
during the blitz, I think we picked up uh, close to a thousand tons in about 18 weeks. And what we really did is we took like a different way of looking at, at the litter problem in that we identified streets that were heavily littered, streets that were less so, and we sort of increased the frequency. And you would have seen if you travel along the ramps and so that you sometimes see our crews out or our contractors out uh, collecting litter. And um, we we're doing a, they're doing a tremendous job doing that. Um, so, you know, we continue to have uh, great participation in the uh, Growing Green with Pride event. And we'd encourage you to come out and join us this Saturday, which is, um, you know, this our fall event. And um, it has been unprecedented over the years, and we want to sort of make this even bigger and better. Um, so, you know, we um, are continuing to plant new trees. We have about 10,000 new trees that were planted, and we recently got a grant for a million dollars for an additional 4,000 trees. So one of the things uh, that came out of the development in Prince George's County is that a lot of trees were removed and we want to sort of reforest, like re increase our, our urban forest uh, to reforest that because um, that helps with the general environment. So, you know, we remain steadfast in our commitment to making the county beautiful, environmentally vibrant place to live, work and play. And um, we do, do this in a collaborative fashion. And um, we thank you for supporting us, and we look forward to working with you collectively on future initiatives as we work to make Prince George's County more beautiful. So that's all I have from, for DPWT, so I'll turn it over to Adriana Caldieri from DOE. Thank you. Good morning. Um, thank you, Dr. Johnson, County Executive also Brooks. Um, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, thanks for having us here today. I'm Adriana Calderelli. I am the acting director of the Department of the Environment. Uh, so you probably know us best uh, because we come and we pick up your trash and we do your recycling, but we do some other things as well. Um, we provide residents uh, with resources to address flooding and climate change, um, and we even facilitate pet adoptions at our county facility. Uh, animal shelter in Upper Mar Marlboro. So if you're in the market for a new family member, come join us. Uh, visit our our shelter. We would uh, we have a lot of great pets there for adoption. But we're not here to talk about pets today. Sorry, I got a little off track. Um, we're here to talk about um, beautification. Um, we at DOE are entering our fourth year of our beautification initiative marketing campaign. Um, called Part of It, Proud of It, Keep It, Prince George's Clean and Beautiful. Hopefully uh, you're familiar with this because um, this marketing campaign features outreach and education billboards, bus shelters, radio, video, media spots, bus wraps, newspapers, and social media advertisements. Because we're trying all of these, this marketing is really intended to change people's behavior around illegal dumping and littering. Um, so in order to do that, uh, we sort of do it a two pronged approach. We want to make it as simple as possible for the residents to dispose of what they don't want anymore. So in addition to our curbside collections of our weekly curbside side collection of trash, recycling and composting, um, we also hold other events. Um, so this past year, we hosted four household hazardous waste and electronic events, um, two paper shredding events, and three scrap tire events. These opportunities offer um, residents an, an alternative to illegal dumping. So if we make it easy for you to get rid of what you don't want, um, hopefully it'll end up at our landfill or our recycling facility where it belongs. Um, as County Executive also Brooks mentioned, um, we have expanded our curbside composting program. Um, we're excited to share that all residents receiving county provided trash and recycling services will have a green wheeled cart and materials delivered to their home by the end of the winter, January 2024. Um, so they'll be able to compost easily at their home. Um, this additional waste collection service will happen on Mondays, um, and you can put it right in with your yard trim. Um, and we invite you to recycle 
food related and food soiled items such as leftovers, um, produce, shells, paper towels, uncoated paper plates, cardboard, and another, a bunch of other items. Um, if you're interested in um, what you can and can't compost, please visit our website. Uh, we have a full list of those types of materials. Um, I, we have a lot of accomplishments. Uh, and instead of reading them out, um, we provided a handout. Um, and one of them that I'd like to highlight particularly is our big belly dual solar powered trash and recycling receptacles. There's a picture of one right over there. Um, we were able to install 64 of them in 2023 so far. Um, and this bus stop right behind you is slated to have one um, installed very, very soon. So that's gonna be very exciting. Um, so uh, in addition to making it easy for residents to get rid of the things that they don't want, we would also are focusing on minimizing the stuff that people collect um, that they didn't really ask for or don't really want that ultimately ends up um, littering our streets and our rivers. Um, so we have a couple of... Um, legislative bills that have passed recently that we are working on um, outreaching to let everybody know they're happening um, and to tell people why they're happening and hopefully to slowly start to change behavior. So the first one is the upon request foodware bill. Um, I sadly eat out a lot. I, I do take out. Um, I probably should cook more, but I don't. Um, but every time I get a bag, I, I get disposable wear. I, I probably have a drawer full of plastic forks and knives and things that I don't need. Um, and I, I'm probably not unique in that. I suspect many of you have that drawer full of things that you don't want, you don't need, you didn't ask for. So this legislation has um, now required uh, those types of um, restaurants not to automatically put that stuff in your bags. So you have to ask for it. You either have to ask for it, and I've seen some of the restaurants just put a display where you can, as you're walking out, you can get that. We're hoping that um, by get, having less stuff that you don't want to begin with, um, we will have to create less of it long term, but it'll also, less of it will end up as litter on our streets. Um, so you should be seeing more information about that, and um, hopefully you'll start seeing the restaurants in the county changing over as that happens. The second one um, we're pretty excited about is our paper, our plastic bag re ban at retail establishments. Um, plas Single-use plastic bags are a bane. Uh, you see them everywhere. They're, they're light. They float around everywhere. They're in water. You see them up flying up against uh, fences. And oftentimes, these single-use plastic bags don't even last a single use. Um, I've had many a time where by the time, I, they don't even make it to my car. There's a better way. Um, and so starting January 1st, um, our retail establishments will no longer um, be having plastic bags at all. Um, so, in, so what we will have, what we have available for you today, and we'll have available at different events, is a, our reusable bag. Uh, we'd like to change behavior so that when you go to the grocery store, um, you'll remember to put this in, in your car, pull it out, and bring this instead of plastic bags. These can be used multiple times. They're nice and big. So probably three, what could fit in three of those single use plastic bags can now fit into this. Um, and as I mentioned, we're providing them free of charge here and at other events this fall. Um, if you don't bring a plastic, uh, if you don't bring a reusable bag or a bag that you already have somewhere lying around your house um, and you do need a bag, paper bags will be available, but there will be a 10 cent charge um, for each of those carryouts. Um, there are some exemptions and some nuances to the legislation, so please feel free to check out our website and it'll give you all of the information you need. Um, so I 
just want to, again, thank you for having me. Um, thanks for participating in all of our initiatives. Um, I think we can see that this, this beautiful median, um, I think is, is proof that we are doing really good work here. We can, there's always more that can be done. And we're here to partner with you and help you um, achieve the goals that we have to make Prince George's beautiful. Thank you. Good morning. County Executive also Brooks, thank you for coming to Woodlawn. Uh, other county and state representatives, we'd like to welcome you all to our area of the county called Woodlawn. The Woodlawn Community Association's Executive Board joins me in welcoming you to our community. A few short thank yous are necessary. Thank you to Council Member Eric Olson and his staff, former delegate, now Senator. Alonzo Washington, Paulette Jones of the Department of Public Works and Transportation and her entire staff, but specifically Laura Robinson, Program Director of Landscape Design Environment Resilience at the Neighborhood Design Center, Jason Spruill of Right Tree, Right Place, and last but not least, the Executive Board of the Woodlawn Community Association. Without them, there would not be a team. We do it all together, like our monthly cleanup events every third Saturday of the month. Of course, with the help of a Woodlawn resident, Mr. Randy Holly, and my husband, Wayne Fells. Just two days before I rolled up on Paulette and others doing a site visit here in Woodlawn in preparation of today's event, my neighbor, said to me, I love those plants on 71st at the Woodlawn sign. I know you had something to do with it. I told her not by myself. The plants were donated by the county and planted three years ago at our third Growing Greenwood Pride event. We're so glad they decided to show out today for you. <laughs> um, the uh, no mo area in the um, County right away was a, was definitely a surprise, and we want to thank the other Wayne for, for in the Department of Public Works for that. Not my Wayne, the other Wayne. Um, what else did I want to tell you? Um, we had a swall near the recreation center, and finally, with the assistance of our newly elected council member, uh, it received some attention. We are presently pleased now when we walk into the uh, Woodlawn Park and don't have to look at all of that muck and mire that's left after we have a heavy rain or after the snow melts. Uh, trees and shrubs were planted there. And uh, I know um, Laura and Wayne had something to do with that. I see my friends here from uh, Office of Community Relations. Uh, they're doing a great job, uh, County Exec. Keep them on board. Um, we still have some areas in Woodlawn that need some serious attention, and we waited and are still awaiting for the county to take our request seriously and finally resolve them. Issues like temporary street repairs that required a complete repaving and not patchwork, sidewalk repairs and installation of new sidewalks, and finally, completion of some railings that were temporarily repaired, but not replaced. Just to name a few. Um, in closing, I'd like to say thanks again for coming today. And y'all come back now when you can sit a spell. Good morning, everybody. My name is Tamara Gilbert, and I am the proud principal of Woodridge Elementary School. Woo um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank County Executive Also Brooks and the Prince George's County government, Miss Anna Fells from the Woodlawn Community Association, and um, definitely our new superintendent, Howes, um, for his leadership.
Woodridge Elementary is a community school, which means that we provide wraparound services to students, staff, and their families. And one of the things I want to share is that Miss Ina Fells and Miss Llewellyn Conti are two amazing women who serve as leaders for the Woodlawn Community Association. And they have a presence at our school for every event. They are so awesome and we greatly appreciate your partnership. We have a great partnership because of the ongoing communication and support from our community school coordinator, Mrs. Carrie Pugh. The Woodlawn Community Association has donated items for students, shared resources with parents and families, and communicated school and county initiatives to the entire community. We've provided them with support for yoga and Zumba and aerobics classes, and it has just been wonderful. I also want to add that we also have our Growing Green initiative that we participate in every year. When I first became the principal at Woodridge Elementary School, I drove around the neighborhood. I saw the green woodlawn sign that you see here, the beautiful trees, the flowers, the, the brick houses. And I wanted our school to reflect this beautiful community. And so as a Maryland Green School, our Green School coordinator, Ms. Delia McKenzie, ensures that we participate every year. We recycle. Our kids know how to recycle. They're planting trees. Our parents come out and they're like, what do you need? The first time we had a Growing Green initiative and I was principal, I saw all these dads pulling up with their trucks, pulling out their tools. And I'm like, oh, this is serious. I wasn't prepared for this. But I appreciate that partnership. And lastly, as a member of the Woodridge School community, I am beyond grateful for the support of the county government, the Woodlawn Community Association, but most importantly, our Woodridge families who consistently support without hesitation. So I thank you and thank you all again for having us here and celebrating this beautiful occasion.